When you live on one of the eight planets, I suppose we have a lot to talk about. That's because Earth is the planet we are most familiar with. Join me as we continue our journey through Earth. If you're looking through a telescope at Earth, it might not look like a cool planet like Jupiter or Saturn. But what is cool about it is what's inside. All of this. The forest biome includes terrestrial habitats that are dominated by trees and other woody plants. Cold streams also act as a source of life. Today, forests cover about one-third of the world's land surface and are found in many different terrestrial regions around the globe. Ever go in the woods to have that rich, fresh smell? Well, that's because of these. Leaves and the trees soak up all the carbon dioxide that's in the air and release it as fresh oxygen. And it makes the woods smell so fresh, so pure. There are three general types of forests. The first is the temperate forest, which is a forest found between the tropical and boreal regions located in the temperate zone. It is within the second largest biome on the planet, covering 25% of the world's forest area. Los Angeles and Vancouver are both considered to be located in the temperate zone. However, Vancouver is located in a temperate rainforest, while Los Angeles is more subtropical. The second is the tropical forest. Tropical forests are closed canopy forests growing within 28 degrees north or south of the equator. They are very wet places, receiving more than 200 centimeters of rainfall per year, either seasonally or throughout the entire year. And finally, boreal forests. Boreal forests are defined as forests growing in high latitude environments where freezing temperatures occur for six to eight months. We may not share life with other planets in the solar system, but we do share one thing, violent storms. Let's start off with a big one, hurricanes. Hurricanes are the most violent storms on Earth. The scientific term for hurricane is tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones are like giant engines that use warm, moist air as fuel. That is why they form over warm ocean waters near the equator. The warm, moist air over the ocean rises upward from near the surface. The warm air rises, causing an area of lower air pressure below. Air from the surrounding areas with higher air pressure pushes into a low pressure area. Then that new air becomes warm and moist and rises too. As the warm air continues to rise, the surrounding air swirls in to take place. As the warmed moist air rises and cools off, the water in the air forms clouds. The whole system of clouds and wind spins and grows, fed by the ocean's heat and water evaporating from the surface. Storms that form north of the equator spin counterclockwise. Storms south of the equator spin clockwise. This difference is because of the Earth's rotation on its axis. As the storm system rotates faster and faster, an eye forms in the center. It is very calm and clear in the eye, with very low air pressure. Higher pressure air from above flows down into the eye. The eye is a region of mostly calm weather at the center of strong tropical cyclones. The eye of the storm is a roughly circular area, typically 20 to 40 miles in diameter. It is surrounded by the eye wall, a ring of towering thunderstorms where the most severe weather and highest winds occur. High winds are a primary cause of hurricane-inflicted loss of life and property damage. Another cause is the flooding resulting from the coastal storm surge of the ocean and the torrential rain both which accompany the storm. The Saffir-Simpson scale is the standard scale for rating the severity of the hurricane as measured by the damage it causes. It classifies hurricanes on a hierarchy from Category 1 being minimal, through Category 2 moderate, Category 3 extensive, Category 4 extreme, and Category 5 catastrophic. A super typhoon is equivalent to a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane. Hurricanes are just one of the most devastating storms that occur on our home planet. 
but there are other dangerous weather phenomena that also causes great devastation. This would be the tornado. Tornadoes are formed from thunderstorms. A tornado is a rapidly rotating column of air that is in contact with both the surface of the Earth and a cumulonimbus cloud. Tornadoes come in many shapes and sizes, and they are often visible in the form of a condensation funnel originating from the base of the cumulonimbus cloud with a cloud of rotating debris and dust beneath it. Tornadoes occur most frequently in North America, particularly in Central and the Southeastern regions of the United States known as Tornado Alley. They do also occur elsewhere in the United States. They form from thunderstorms known as supercells. Supercells contain mesocyclones, an area of organized rotation a few miles up into the atmosphere, usually one to six miles across. As the mesocyclone lowers into the cloud base, it begins to take in cool, moist air from the downdraft region of the storm. The convergence of warm air in the updraft and cool air causes a rotation wall cloud to form. And when it touches down, it can cause great destruction. The weather on Earth can be very unpredictable, and in recent years, violent storms are increasing than we had ever seen before. What could cause Mother Nature to churn and break all the norms it once possessed? I suppose we'll have to save that for another time. From trees creating fresh oxygen for all living things on Earth, to violent storms creating destructive paths, this is all just part of Mother Nature. We are still learning so much about our home planet, despite coming from our Homo erectus state 1.8 million years ago. And we still have so much more to talk about. But until then, be curious, be creative, and always look up.